for my one to five, uh, I wanted to talk about INO and INO plus syndromes. So in order for normal horizontal gaze to take place, um, you need coordination between the medial and the lateral recti muscles. So the lateral rectus muscle, as we know, is supplied by the abducens nerve, which originates from the sixth cranial nerve nucleus at the level of the pons. And when this contracts, it will result in um, abduction. And the medial rectus muscle is supplied by the third nerve or oculomotor nerve that originates from the third nerve nucleus, which sits in the midbrain. And when this contracts, this results in abduction. The contralateral um, third nerve nucleus and the ipsilateral sixth nerve nucleus communicate with each other via the median longitudinal fasciculus. And there's a heavily myelinated tract, which is located in the pons. So if we were to take leftward gaze as an example, in the normal pathway, the horizontal leftward gaze would originate in the contralateral um, eye field area, which would be the right eye field area. This will then activate the paramedian pontine reticular formation, which will go on to activate the sixth nerve nucleus. This in turn activates um, and leads to contraction of the ipsilateral lateral rectus muscle and the contralateral medial rectus muscle via the median longitudinal fasciculus. And this will therefore result in leftward gaze. In INO, there is a lesion in the median longitudinal fasciculus. This causes a disruption between the communication of the contralateral third nerve nucleus and the ipsilateral sixth nerve nucleus. And this results in impaired adduction of the eye ipsilateral for the lesion in the median longitudinal fasciculus and also abduction nystagmus in the eye contralateral to the lesion in the median longitudinal fasciculus. Patients with INO can complain of intermittent horizontal diplopia and their oscillopsia, and mainly the signs are primarily elicited on conjugate horizontal gaze. In terms of causes, um, in a case series of about 410 patients, 38% were caused by infarction, 34% by demyelination, and 28% other causes were cited, including trauma, infection, such as HIV and syphilis, iatrogenic injury, brainstem hemorrhage, vasculitis tumor, and tentorial herniation. Because of the location of the median longitudinal fasciculus um, to surrounding adjacent structures, um, and also its complex nature, patients with INO can sometimes have additional brainstem signs if other adjacent structures are involved. And these type of collection of symptoms and signs are referred to as INO plus syndromes. And these are just a couple of examples of such syndromes. So in one and a half syndrome, the patient will have an ipsilateral median longitudinal fasciculus and um, paramedian pontine reticular formation lesion and their abducens nucleus. So the patient will have a combination of an ipsilateral INO and an ipsilateral conjugate horizontal gaze palsy. And this will result in loss of all horizontal movements except abduction of the eye contralateral to the lesion. So it's one and a half because one eye is not moving at all and the other eye can only do half the movement it's meant to do. Patients can have something called eight and a half syndrome. This is a combination of one and a half syndrome plus a, a lesion involving the fascicle of the seventh cranial nerve. Um, and this results in an ipsilateral lower motor neuron facial nerve palsy. So patients will have the same features of a one and a half syndrome plus ipsilateral lower motor neuron facial weakness. There is something called half and half syndrome where the patient has a lesion involving median longitudinal fasciculus and the fascicle of the sixth nerve, but they're sparing of the abducens nucleus. So patient will have half of a horizontal gaze palsy from the INO, and the additional half is as a result of the abduction deficit from the sixth nerve palsy. And then finally, the WebNO or the wall-eyed bilateral INO results from bilateral damage to the median longitudinal fasciculus. Patients will have features in keeping with bilateral INO, and patients will also have exotropia in the primary position. And that's me.